Within Power Automate Desktop, the if statement is probably the most used action you'll have within your flows. It's a logical way to say, if something happens, do this. If not, do that. So it's pretty powerful to be able to do a lot of things that you want to do within your flow. So in this tutorial, I'll explain all the different kinds of ways you can use the if statement within Power Automate Desktop. Let's learn. So let's start with a simple example of an if statement. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set a variable. Click and drag that in here, and I'm going to call this variable called CarMaker. And initially, when I'm going to set the value to the uh, CarMaker, I'm going to set to Honda. Now I want to be able to check that variable to see if it uh, is uh, true or false. So under conditionals, I look for the if action, click and drag it. And what I'm going to do is just a simple if statement. I'm going to check the first variable, which is going to be the, the car maker. And I want to make sure that it is equal to, there's different options that you can select for the if statement, but by default, it's equal to. And I'm going to specify Honda. And then what happens is that it'll actually create two statements. It'll actually have an if statement, and then it'll have the end to the if statement. So anything that is true will occur within these two actions. So what I want to do is I want to have a simple display message box to say the statement is true. So I'm going to do search for message, bring it in, display message. And I'm going to simply say statement, is true. All right, let's run it. Now, what should happen is that when it goes through the if statement, is car maker equal to Honda? Of course it is. So now it's going to display a statement or a message box that says the statement is true. Now, another action that you can have within an if statement is an else. So if it's not this, then it's that. So it's the opposite to being true. So if I go back, under the conditionals folder and you'll see that there is an else. I'm going to click and drag that over underneath the message box. And what this says is that if car maker equals Honda equals true, display this message. But what I want to do is I want to put another message that says this it's false. So I'm going to say click and copy this. I'm going to say statement is false. Now because this statement car maker equals Honda is true. It's always going to display the message of statement equals true. If I want to make it so that it's false, I can just simply change it from car maker Honda to car maker Toyota. Click save. Now what should happen when I run it, it should display a message and it should go to the else action because it's not true anymore. And it should respond with the statement is false. This is exactly what it's supposed to do. So that is an example of how you use the else statement. Now going back to the if statement, recall that I said that for the operator, I can say that it's equal to, but I can also say that if it's not equal to. So in other words, is car, waker, car maker not equal to Honda? Click save. So then what should happen is that is a true statement because it is Toyota. So let's run it. And just to verify that it is not equal, I'll come back with a statement is true. So that's how you can specify different kinds of conditions for your if statement. So another um, action you can actually have is something called an else if. So what an else if is, is that it looks at the first if statement. If that is true, do the next statement. If it's not true, you can actually say that it goes to the next statement, which would be an else if. It does a different check. It's a different if statement. If that's true, do that set of code. And if that's not true, do the else. Well, here's an example of that. So I'm going to click in, select the else if. I'm going to drag it in between the if and the else statement here. And again, it's going to pop up with another um, asking for two variables of being able to check a variable and to check the, the if it's equal to or not equal to a, a, a value. So again, I'm going to select the car maker. I'm going to say if it's equal to Toyota. So then what I'm going to say is going to change this from car maker 
equals Honda. And I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to put it right in here. And I'm going to say, if this is true, then the car maker is equal to Toyota. And then I have to change the car maker equal to Honda. If it's equal to Honda, display this message. If it's equal to Toyota, display that message. So let's run and see what happens. Now, what should happen is that it should be come up with a pop-up that says the car maker is equal to Toyota, which it does. So that's an example of where it hit the first if statement. Is car maker equal to Honda? No. Okay, so it didn't execute this statement. If the car maker is equal to Toyota, yes, then it's going to display this message. Now, if I change the car maker to, let's say, Ford, neither this if statement nor this if statement is, is correct. So it'll default to the very, very last else statement, which is, I'm going to say the car maker not found. All right, and we'll run it, and that is the statement that should execute because it's neither Honda nor Toyota, so the car, car maker is not found. So that's an example of how you can use an else if within your if statement. Now there's another way you can specify the condition within the if statement. And let me show you, and it'll be evident as to why we're doing this, but let me show you how you can do this. So if I go to the if statement, and in this uh, first if statement, it's basically saying if the car maker is equal to Honda. But let's say we did it this way. We said if the car maker equals, single quote, Honda up here, what this is basically asking our automate desktop to do is evaluate this statement. Does car maker equal to Honda? And if it's equal to true, and this is a true statement, and then it will do this next statement here. Let's see if this works. We'll run this. Car maker is equal to Honda. So then we click OK, and that's done. Now here's why this is important. What if we wanted to have it so that we had a second variable and we wanted to do that test within action number two? I'll show you what I mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another variable. And I'm going to call it car model. Hmm. And I'm going to say the car model is civic. OK. Now what I want to do is I want to have it so that if the car maker is Honda and the car model is equal to civic, display a message. So first of all, I'm going to change the, the display message equals Honda Civic. <clears throat> now, what I want to do is I want to change this if statement slightly. So what I can do is I can actually, within this statement, I can put a logical and. And then I can say our model is equal to Civic like this. So what it's going to say is if the car maker is equal to Honda and the car model is equal to Civic, and it's, if this statement is true, if, which it will be, do this statement here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this, these two statements here. If it's not true, display this. So let's see what happens. So the car maker, the car maker, well, the value is equal to Honda Civic, which is exactly what we wanted to do. So that's a way that you can actually modify your if statement. Instead of having multiple if statements, you can contain it within one single if statement. And the single if statement is saying the logic is, is if the car maker is equal to Honda and the car maker is equal to, or the car model is equal to Civic, and it evaluates to true, do the next statement. Okay. So the other thing you can do is you can actually have a logical and. The other one you can have is an actual logical or. Let me show you how you can do that. What if we wanted to test? Now if the car maker was equal to Honda or the car maker was equal to Toyota. So I'm going to do that statement. So 
Toyota. If it equals to true. Okay. Oh, sorry. I have to change it. My mistake. This has to be a logical and or. So if either the car maker is equal to Honda or it's equal to, to, to Toyota, this statement will be true. And then it'll execute this statement. I'm going to say car maker is equal to either Honda or Toyota. And I'll take out the car model. We don't need that anymore. So if the car maker is Honda or Toyota, that is going to evaluate the true. Let's run it. So value the car maker is a Honda. The if statement in action number two is true. It's going to display. It's either car is your Honda or Toyota. If I change this from Toyota Honda to Toyota, the statement is still going to be true because it's a logical or. Run it. And it's still going to display the message saying that the car maker is either toy Honda or a Toyota, which it does. So in this last example for the if statement, what I'm going to talk to you about is, well, what we've don't, talked about so far already is if the true statement is equal to or not equal to. But there's a couple of other options that you can maybe use in your if statement. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the car maker back to Honda. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this display message to say is statement is true. And I'm going to change this other one to say statement is false. All right. Now, if I go back to my if statement, I'm going to change this back to just plain old car maker. And we know that this works. However, the operator is there's a few more options that we can select. Instead of equal to, what if we say contains? What contains says is that if this word, this value in the second operand is contained within the first one. Now we know the car maker is going to be equal to Honda. We know that this is going to be true. However, if we just put in the last two letters of the word, DA is contained within the word Honda. This should evaluate to be true. Run it. And when it hits that if statement, it's going to say, yeah, DA is contained within the word Honda. The statement is true. You, it can also be case sensitive. It's automatically, and you can actually see within the, in the statement that says contains DA case sensitive. So if I change this to uppercase DA, this will evaluate the false. Now I run because capital D and capital A is not contained within Honda as we spelt it. It's going to say statement is false. However, there is a way to be able to say case insensitive. Going back to the if statement, there's an option that says ignore case. What that basically says is I don't care what the case is, upper or lower case is just as long as it, that the letters DA appear in that first variable, this will now evaluate to true. And which it does. So going back to the going back to the if statement, there's a lot of different options that you can select. You can even check to see if it's is empty or it isn't empty. Isn't empty basically says Am I dealing with a zero length string? Car maker clearly has Honda in it. So isn't empty is going to evaluate to true. If I run this, it'll come back as statement is true. Which it does. If I force the variable car maker to be empty string, which I can do, and the trick to doing that is, is that if you put single quotes with no space around the percent signs, this essentially makes the car maker a, they used to call it a null string or an empty string. This will now evaluate to being, is it truly really is empty, so this will evaluate to being false so that it should display the message of statement is false when I run it, which it will. Fingers crossed. Statement is false. So, so that's this tutorial on the if statement. If you have a question or if you have a comment, feel free to drop a message within the comment section on this video. And please subscribe to my channel for more content on Power Automate Desktop.